Fusion 360 3D Cam Toolpath Containment. Let's walk through how to fix this fillet and take it from this toolpath to a correct parallel toolpath, walking down it, and then how to do the same thing but to extend the toolpath over the left and right edges of this fillet. Welcome to another Fusion Friday, folks. Activating my new setup here. 3D parallel. We've got a 3 8 inch ball end mill. What I like to do with 3D operations, just click OK. Let's just see, make sure we get a tool path and it's terrible, but that's OK. Now the first thing I notice is such a wide step over. So we'll fix that. But I don't bring it all the way down to my finish step over. We'll leave it at 50 thousandths. I want it to kind of look like our end goal, but I don't want to take the extra time to compute all the little detail yet. Let's get this thing dialed in first. So now, I like that, let's contain it to the fillet. Right click, edit, geometry, change this machining boundary to selection. And I want to pick just the fillet well, of course it worked great here. Sometimes it doesn't work so well. Uh, we'll show that here in a minute. But I'll, anywhere where I get the selection of the fillet, I can click once, and it projects that square view of that fillet down. Click OK. So it doesn't look so hot, right? Take a look at the simulation. I like to turn show points on. That lets me zoom in, and I can click this blue point and you'll see that the tool is ending way up there. So it's kind of one of those what the heck moments. Why isn't it going further? Well, it's not going any further because I have tool containment set as tool center on boundary. So the center of the tool isn't allowed to extend beyond that boundary, which is why it's stopping right there. Most people, myself included previously, would have changed it to tool outside a boundary. No. Leave it tool center on boundary, check contact point boundary. This is gonna add to the zone, which is exactly what we want, and it's gonna add to the zone such that it maintains contact along this uh, containment zone. Now this doesn't look perfect because, again, I'll click on that point, it doesn't go all the way down. Another one of those what's going on moments. This time it's just because we have a crude step over. So now let's go ahead, edit, passes, and we'll change that step over from 50 thousandths to 5 thousandths of an inch. Looks pretty good. Orient it from the left, simulate, hit play, and you can see this tool is going to walk down that fillet pretty nice. Again, maintaining tangential uh, what do you call it, <laughs> cutting tangentially along the face and finishing right when we finish cutting the fillet. Awesome. I like it. I'm happy. That's the big takeaway. Now, how do you ex take that toolpath and extend it so that you're able to give yourself a little bit of a lead in and a lead out? I have not figured out how to do this in geometry, in passes, or in linking. I just don't know how. Here's how I do do it though. And I'm gonna give a big shout out to Seth. I'll, I'll mention his information here in a second. He was the one that uh, really has led the way on this. Hop into the patch environment. And if you're like me, you've never been here before. I want to extend this surface, but I can't do that right now because it just doesn't work. So instead what we're gonna do is create offset. Click on the thing once and notice how it says it's zero, so we're gonna create a zero offset, or basically we're gonna replicate this thing with no additional space. Click OK. We now have this bodies menu pop up, and I'm not paying attention to which component I'm in. Normally I'm a stickler for that. Here I'm not too worried about it. So let me show you what just happened. Hide my part. This is what we made. Patching, the way, best way I can think to describe it is it creates zero thickness surfaces. So this is representative of that, but it has no thickness. In other words, it's not offset, it doesn't have any thickness, it's just sort of thin, totally thin geometry, if you will. But because we've created this, I can now do modify, extend. Click on here, click on, hold down control, 
click on the other side, and we'll just extend this by 50 thousandths of an inch. Again, if you roll back once, you can see what we just did. We extended the width of this perfect. How do we now implement that in CAM? I'll generate this real quick, just so we have it. Control D to duplicate it. I'll do parallel plus patch. Right click, edit. We've got to do two things. First, delete our existing machining boundary because I want to pick the new one, which is the, okay, so here's a great example. If I hover around, there we go. See, I got it working there, but sometimes it doesn't give you what you want. So I'll click here. Let's say I couldn't get this to work, right, by this view. I'll click here. Now, I'll click once and hold down on that green line. Let up. I get this little pop-up. I can now hover my mouse over. It's going to update the selection when I reach that cross line. Oops, that was tricky. Right there. Now, important, click once. That locks in that new line. And now, you also have to click the green plus to accept that new selection. So we've widened that out. One more thing, though. We need to tell this parallel operation that we're making use of this new patched body or patched surface. Just clicking that zone isn't enough. So this is where you would check model. And up here, I'm gonna expand my CAD tree, expand my bodies, and there's that patched body. I can pick that because that's the whole thing and I've still got that containment zone, click OK. Folks, this is so amazing, this is so awesome. Take a look, there's my narrow toolpath, there's my wide one. Let's turn off my body and turn my part back on so you can see it. Uh, narrow one, wide one. Where did this information come from? Two people. First off, shout out to Rob Lockwood. Rob is a Fusion 3 expert and HSM expert. He has some great YouTube videos, link in the video description. Two of them that came to mind for this video were Guide to Machining Boundaries and the Ultimate 3D Toolpath. Rob, thanks for all you do. But the real hero, no discredit to Rob, is Seth Medor. Seth is like the god on the Fusion 360 forums. He's a great guy. He's a great machinist. He's had a heck of a big background. And he did an HSM webinar just a few weeks ago. Where is it? Yeah, this guy right here, where he started to walk through this, but he kind of ran out of time. And so I thought, let's, let's figure out how to do that. And I struggled with it, and Seth helped me out. And I really wanted to share this because, folks, at the end of the day, 3D toolpaths are all about understanding what parameters to modify and a lot of times how to select containment zones and work within different, to blend in different tool paths that have different pitches or different heights or different tool paths for different zones. So it's so key to be able to control where those tool paths go and having the integrated CAD side from Fusion 360 is so crucial to that. Um, Seth also made a great point that he'll do this and then he'll take out his linking moves because um, he is blessed to have a Fanuc uh, memory processor and controller, and you know, everybody knows that Fanuc doesn't exactly uh, give out gobs of extra free memory. Why didn't that turn off? I don't know. Uh, Should have. But you can basically now take out some of these complicated linking moves that are going to add a lot of lines to your code, so you can shorten up your code, and that can be really important if you're using an older machine. So Seth, thanks uh, for your help. If you do have Fusion 360 help, Seth that does a great job of responding to folks who post on the forum. Look at this, 3,043 posts. He's an elect expert elite. I had the chance to meet him at IMTS and hopefully looking forward to running into him again. So patch environment is where it's at. Folks, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Take care. See you next Friday. Mm -hmm.